So the latest video just went up about Metarot Perfect Edition, and that means I've covered 20 games as part of the Swan Song series. If we only count those that have had general releases in retail, that means I've got 178 more to go. A friend of mine told me a while back that I'll be almost 30 by the time I've completed the series if I continue at the current pace, and that is a little bit worrisome. But anyway, every 20 games or so, I want to put together a video where I go over some of the corrections I have for past videos and answer some viewer questions. So for this first episode, I'm going to answer frequently asked questions, but feel free to tweet your questions at Wonderswansong on Twitter if you have them, and I'll try to include them in a future video. So first, let's start with the errata. On episode 6 about Mahjong Toriumon, I mentioned that the Toriumon series had two games, and this is incorrect. Uh, in addition to Mahjong Toriumon and Shogi Toriumon, there's also Gomoku Narabe and Reversi Toriumon, which was released in early 2000. So there's that. And then on episode 17 about Beat Mania for Wonderswan, I mentioned that there were five possible timing judgments when pressing a note, flashing greats, greats, goods, bads, and pours. However, uh, flashing greats were only introduced in Beat Mania Complete Mix, which was the game immediately following Beat Mania Third Mix, which is the game that Beat Mania for Wonderswan was based on, which is why flashing greats do not appear in Beat Mania for Wonderswan, nor do they appear in the footage of the results screen that I showed. All right, let's move on to some questions. So first off, the most frequently asked question is pretty much what brought you to do this series in the first place? And really that's because there's massive lack of information about the Wonderswan's game library on the internet, especially in English. Uh, people dismiss the Wonderswan as being a console dominated by anime license games. And somehow that's supposed to automatically disqualify it from having any worthwhile titles of its own. Uh, I think it became a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy where people heard bad things about the Wonderswan, so they didn't want to look into it more, and then that meant there was less information about it, and then that means that if you look into the Wonderswan, the only thing you can find is people saying that it was a bad system. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm approaching the Wonderswan with an open mind. I don't have an answer for you yet uh, about whether or not the Wonderswan is a system that's worth giving a damn about, uh, because I'm experiencing these games as I make the videos every week. However, it's my intention to document the Wonderswan's library so people can have more informed opinions about it and also surface information that have been stuck on the Japanese side of the internet to English-speaking audiences. I do find it a little bit unfortunate that so far many of the games with the most interesting stories tend to be games that people are going to find boring or wouldn't be tempted to click on, but ultimately it's their loss. Even if I do end up deciding that the Wonderswan is an interesting console with an unfortunate game library after having played all of them, I think it'll be worth my time just for having made more information available to English speakers. And usually that ties into my second question, which is how good are you at Japanese anyway? So a few years ago, I took the Japanese language proficiency test and passed the N2 test, which is the second highest level you can get. I think I've got conversational Japanese pretty much down. Uh, from my last four trips to Japan, I've spoken Japanese only to native Japanese speakers, and I haven't really had any difficulty conveying what I want to say. Uh, I can watch TV or anime entirely in Japanese without subtitles and get away with it 95% of the time. Uh, my written Japanese could be much better. Uh, I tend to struggle more with grammar when composing than with reading. And since I'm used to speaking informally with friends, uh, I'm not really as used to the formal stuff. I think the biggest obstacle for me with regards to this project is not having a wider pool of domain-specific vocabulary. Uh, I tend to know a lot of the vocabulary specific to the topics that I discuss with people regularly, but like being dropped into Super Robot Wars or Nobunaga's Ambition or whatever and having to figure out words that have to do with military strategy out of nowhere is pretty challenging. Um, I should say I stopped studying Japanese as actively after having taken the JLPT. Mostly because I'm pretty content with the level of Japanese I have today, and they're diminishing returns from continuing my studies uh, to get to the N1 level. Next question on the list is, do you own all of the games you talk about? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, of the games I've covered so far, I only own two of them, uh, Densha to Go and Metarot Perfect Edition. And I would like to grab Beat Mania for Wonderswan, but I'm having money issues lately, so I can't afford to buy it just yet. I don't really feel a compulsion to own a complete collection of Wonderswan games, which is usually what people are asking about with this question. Uh, because again, if it turns out that a lot of these games are un uninteresting to me, it'll feel like I just amassed a bunch of bulk for no reason. I don't want to own games merely for the sake of owning them. I want to own games because they mean something to me or because I intend to enjoy them. 
things might have been different uh, if there was a viable means of capturing footage on authentic hardware. And aside from one modder in France, that doesn't seem to exist right now. Uh, Swan Song footage is captured on an emulator primarily because there isn't another good option available and capturing footage off of the screen would be completely unwatchable. This means there's entirely the possibility of compatibility issues down the line, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. So basically, if I end up really liking a game during my research process and I want to play more of it, I'll buy it so I can play it on authentic hardware where it's more convenient for me. Next up, why is this project in video form instead of essays or a podcast? Uh, so if you've looked up the name of any Wonderswan game on YouTube before, especially the less popular ones, uh, you're likely to have encountered a special kind of video where the ROM for the game is loaded into an emulator and you see the opening sequence and maybe 30 seconds of gameplay tops. Uh, a lot of these videos seem to be automatically generated by scripts that just make videos for an entire folder of ROMs, but those videos are tragic because they rarely contain anything actually substantial. So while I could have made everything articles on a website, uh, I also wanted to increase the pool of gameplay footage available on the web where an actual human is playing. And let's be honest, probably playing badly because I'm not very good at video games. That said, I do eventually want to finish the Swan Song website, which will feature a catalog of all the episodes released thus far, and also have transcripts of all the episodes to make the content more accessible to people who might not be able to enjoy the video otherwise, and also make it a more useful reference. Um, I've often remembered hearing something in a video before, but struggled to remember which video it was in, whereas if you can have a searchable text version of the videos, that facilitates things greatly. Last question on the list, will you make an episode about my favorite accessory? I think the Wonderswan has a really interesting assortment of accessories, but covering them is tricky because they can be incredibly expensive or hard to find or impractical to demonstrate. So a good example of this is the Wonderswan Handy Sonar, which is literally a sonar, and uh, it's going to have an episode in two weeks. Right now it's going for several hundred dollars on eBay, and even if I bought one, I'd have to actually get on a boat in order to show it off in action. I'm unemployed right now, so I can't really allow myself to buy a several hundred dollar sonar I'm never going to use just to make a video about it, especially with current viewership numbers. While I'm certainly not opposed to opening something like a Patreon account or taking donations in the future, the viewer base right now simply isn't there for that to make any significant difference in my ability to acquire those accessories. So because of that, I'm sort of hesitant to make any episodes about accessories themselves, but I'd rather discuss the accessories as to how they relate to specific software titles as they come up in the regular Swan Song episodes. So that's it for this Q&A. Uh, once again, if you'd like to submit questions for the next one, which is probably going to happen in 20 more episodes, so in five months, uh, send them to at Wonderswansong. Don't worry, I'll answer your questions right away if I can in a tweet, uh, but I'll try to gather the most popular questions and most interesting questions for the next video, and I'll see you next week.